I will call the City Commission meeting for Thursday, April 20th at 6 o'clock. The Commission Chambers Municipal and Safety Building to order. First, we will have uh, Pastor Lester Latney from the Friendship Baptist Church come up for the invocation. And if you will stay standing, we will have the pledge from the Girl Scouts Troop number 18815. And just please st stay standing for that. Let us go to our holy God in prayer. Eternal and all wise God and Heavenly Father, we come to you today in this place that has been designed for the governing of your people here in Johnson City, Tennessee. And Father, as we come into your divine presence, we pray, God, that you would bless that our mayor, our vice mayor, our commissioners, our city manager, and the administration of this staff and community recognize that you are the one who ordained government and dear God because you are ordained government we pray that we would all be reminded that uh, the uh, movement of government is for the people not for political reasons not for political gain in the world that we are living in right now father in all the challenges that we face across our nation deaths because of violence and all of the other kinds of things that are going on. We pray right now in this place that there will be civility, that they who are governing our community would ask you for guidance, ask you for direction, but most of all listen to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit and his presence. We pray right now, God, that this meeting will be as an instrument to your glory that you would be glorified, your people edified, and the devil horrified. We love you, God. We honor you, and we bless your holy and your divine name. It's in the precious name of Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Resources wisely, use resources wisely, and make the world a better place. And make, make the world a better place. place. Two. your uh, next order of business is to consider the approval of the minutes for the regularly scheduled city commission meeting held on Thursday April 6 2023 can I do one thing first yes sir we had a group of students today that did a gov all out with us <coughs> if y'all want to stand up and we can recognize you 
we appreciate you being here. Hope you had a good time today. Learned something while you were here. But we have a future that is brighter than you might think because of <laughs> people, kids like this right here. So anyway, Amen. thank y'all for coming. If y'all. Thank y'all. All right. Uh, minutes. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Ms. Laus. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Hunter? Yes. Commissioner Wise? Yes. Vice Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mayor Fowler? Yes. Uh, item 4.1 is the consideration of a road closure request for LXI Youth Program. We have Lindsay Jones with us. Hey, Lindsay. Good morning. Evening. Evening. Good morning. LXI requ requests soft closures of St. Louis Street and South Broadway Street for their special event on Saturday, April 29th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The special events committee, including traffic, police, and public works, have reviewed the site plan and found the proposed closures safe and appropriate. We recommend the Board of Commissioners approve these closures. And I have a move let approval. me ask one oh. question real quick. It, so closing Broadway just in the block in front of their um, area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Move approval. I have a, a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? Ms. Laus? Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Hunter? Yes. Commissioner Wise? Yes. Vice Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mayor Fowler? Yes. Do you want to tell us anything or do you know anything about it? Okay. I was hoping Mr. Johnson would be here, but I don't think he's made it yet. <laughs> okay. So we I apologize. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Uh, commission, the next order of business is consideration of the consent agenda. I'm going to be begin with Commissioner Wise. Heck yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like what? to pull 5.1.2. <laughs> special nod to my friends from Science Hill. <laughs> in case my mom's watching at home and wondering, what is he doing? <laughs> Anything else? That's it? That's all. All right. Vice Mayor? No, sir. 5.2.1. And Commissioner Hunter? Uh, no. All right. We'll start with those. 5.1.2. Sure. Um, 5.1.2 is to consider approval of a contract with the Tennessee Department of Transportation to manage a project to improve crosswalk lighting uh, downtown. And uh, Mr. Anthony Todd, who's our traffic engineer, is coming up to address any questions you may have along with our public works director, Andy Best. So my question, that's just an area where I know citizens have raised concerns about visibility, particularly for pedestrians. And I know this effort is at least a part of that solution. And I really just wanted you to kind of review what was being proposed and how that might enhance pedestrian safety downtown. Sure. What, what we are doing in this project is to consider the intersections along Buffalo Street, from Roan Street, Main and Market. So all three of those intersections, plus the ones on State of Franklin, which most people are aware of there at Buffalo, at Spring Street, where the main crossing is, and then also at Roan Street. All those locations, we're going to enhance the lighting. Uh, we will have a consultant come in and evaluate our existing lighting and how we can better light the crosswalks so that people crossing at night will be able to be seen better and also uh, have better visibility uh, for the, the pedestrian themselves. As a part of that, we also take care of some handicap uh, ramps and things of that nature, ADA issues. Thank you. Okay. When, when do you expect this work will be completed? Uh, we are going to try to uh, get a consultant. We have to use a consultant through this um, process, and we hope to get one on board in the next two or three months mm -hmm. and then get started on the project. There is a, an environmental part of it that goes, so we have to go through uh, various steps that are required of the federal process since it uses federal dollars. And uh, so each one of those steps, you cannot move forward until you get to the next one. And uh, some of that is dependent upon the agencies that have to respond. All right. Good. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Thank you. And 5.2.1. Yes. Ms. Ball, uh, let me just kind of set it up while I pull this. Um, I think everybody knows the West Walnut Street corridor project is a very, very complex project. Um, it's a long-term thing. Um, uh, and, and, of course, you never know what 
you're going to get into when you get underground in a project like this. We did have some coverage um, on uh, WJHL last night and probably in, in the press today about this change order that's in front of us today. And if you might just kind of go into some explanations sure. about what has occurred over there and, and the fact, of course, that we have contingency funds for things like this, I'd appreciate it. And, and thank you, uh, Commissioner. Um, this item, as you mentioned, is a very large project. In total, <clears throat> the total amount of the, of the project is $41 million. Um, It was anticipated that there would be some change orders just because of the size of the work. Um, some, of the, some of the items that are included in this change order consider uh, road, road and drainage excavation that was uh, not anticipated during the design phase. Uh, which amounted to a significant amount of it. Um, the other item was just the amount of unsuitable soil that was uncovered during the process. Um, and then backfill for the site um, w that was undercut was also. So there, additionally, we uh, asked the contractor to go in and do some temporary asphalt to keep the dust down and to be able to provide a driving surface that was suitable for people to get access to businesses that was necessary. That work was not anticipated as part of this project initial, initially. <clears throat> this, um, this review of this change order was reviewed over the past, I would say, six weeks, along with our staff, as well as the design engineer, the inspectors, uh, and the contractor. Uh, as a result of that, there was clarification of the contract and making sure that each of these items, <clears throat> in fact, were not a part of that bid. So we have verified the amount of the bid. We verified the amount of the change order. We have also established for those items not listed a unit price so that as, moving, as we move forward, if we encounter those, we're able to anticipate what those changes would be. Again, all of the request is budgeted within a contingency amount. <clears throat> so we're not exceeding what the contingency is. Uh, I think the other question is the amount of time that's been added to the contract as a result of the change orders in addition to the weather. Um, so uh, there's an additional six months, which I know is a burden on uh, the businesses as well as the, the neighbors in that area. That was as a result of the additional work that had to be completed. We will, of course, do everything possible to try to complete that work sooner but we wanted to anticipate that uh, and, and be able to account for the weather delays that we've had. Was, was there also some work on some side streets that weren't anticipated in, there, in the there beginning? Were, I mean, I think there was anticipated that work would be done at intersections of mm -hmm. side streets, Sevier Street, as well as three other streets. I don't think there was the expectation in the, uh, and the amount of um, all the underground utility, um, all of the excavation that would have to be done on those side streets as part of those, uh, as part of the connection to West Walnut Street. And in many cases, those roads have to be completely rebuilt mm -hmm. as a part of the fact that we had so many underground utilities that came into that area. That's very helpful, thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> I just would, I guess, express appreciation for the patience for the businesses in the mm -hmm. corridor. This, this project is one that's been talked about now for probably seven and a half or eight years. We're at the most inconvenient phase of that seven and a half or eight years. Um, but for the rain we've had this spring and winter, we'd be a little further ahead. Mm -hmm. But their patience is appreciated, and the end result is going to be worth it. Um, we just need to power through and get to the end result. I had anticipated voting against this increase until I heard about all the things that are being done in the four streets that we had to redo and dig and all of that. So I, I'm <coughs> probably not going to vote the way I thought it was. So anyway, any other discussion? I right, do have a motion. On the consent agenda, I, I move for approval. Second. I vote. <coughs> motion and a second any further discussion all right miss louse commissioner brock yes commissioner hunter yes commissioner wise yes vice mayor murphy yes mayor fowler yes commission your next uh, next order of businesses are the consideration of ordinances under the first reading item 6.1 is an ordinance is ordinance number 4836-23 
This is the first reading. It's an ordinance to amend Title V, Chapter 1 of the Code of City of Johnson City, Tennessee Ordinance. This is our legal department. Ms. Sandoz. So there have been um, some delays with some contracts whenever they need to be uh, signed in a more expedited manner. And the way that our code of ordinances and the charter currently reads is that the Board of Commissioners have to approve any contract that has terms that have been negotiated before they can be signed by the mayor. And so you'll see now with a lot of purchases, there are terms and conditions that are attached just to what previously were simply purchases, which delays the process of expediting having those signed. So the Tennessee General Assembly uh, passed a state statute, and it is uh, TCA Code 619-104. It was passed March 28th of 2023, became effective, uh, backdated one week to March 21st. That statute allows for the um, local elected officials to pass an ordinance that permits the city manager to be able to sign those contracts. Um, the language of the statute states that there must be some parameters on the type of contracts that can be permitted for the city manager to sign. Uh, you have to have what is allowed and what is not allowed. And so that is what we've done in the ordinance that we've proposed for you. Um, you'll note that with it we define what are contracts of insubstantial long-term consequences um, which we relate that back to the Tennessee Code statute that defines those those would be the contracts of $25,000 or less as well as what is not uh, permitted which would be the disposition of real property which will require that to stay with this board as well as authority to enter litigation so those are the items that would be excluded all other items that would be $25,000 or less per year, which means if it's a five-year contract that exceeds that $25,000, that would still be permitted to be signed by the city manager. Um, so those are the two uh, really defining parts of this ordinance. Uh, but we do propose this for you as a matter to expedite the matters of the city um, and, and for our different departments as well as the vendors. Move approval. I have a, a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, I would just ask if um, these contracts are signed, would, would we be seeing them like we, as an information yes, item at the next meeting or whenever? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. So where you will see those is in the very back part of your agenda mm -hmm. on the information. Good. All of those contracts will still be in that area. Good. Okay. I appreciate where I don't have to sign everything, which mm -hmm. would be good for me. So I appreciate that. Yes. Ms. Lapps. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Hunter. Yes. Commissioner Wise. Yes. Vice Mayor Murphy. Yes. Mayor Fowler. Yes. So we'll be back two more readings on that. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Thank you. Commission, uh, next order of business is item 6.2. This is ordinance number 4842.23. Uh, this is the first reading of an ordinance to authorizing the city of Johnson City to enter into a certain right-of-way access agreement with LMK Communications. Yes, uh, what uh, this ordinance is before you is to enter into a franchise agreement with LMK, uh, uh, make sure I get their name right, Communications. Uh, they're doing business as Segra. Uh, they approached, uh, came to Public Works in December wanting road cut permits, and at that point in time, we're like, we really probably need to enter into a franchise agreement with you before we allow you to cut our roads. So uh, they have been working with our, our legal department on this contract or, or contract that's before you, uh, and it does have to be read three times to, for us to enter into an agreement with SEGRA. Just a couple of questions, uh, Mr. Best. Um, it, it is all of their um, uh, wiring and everything going to be underground and it, are they planning to put any kind of surface um, equipment in uh, or near our sidewalks or anything of that nature 
it is not all underground. Uh, they did provide us with a plan. They had been renting fiber before. Mm -hmm. uh, now they wanted to put their own fiber in. Um, they will be attaching to some poles and they will be making also underground. They, they are making, um, putting in infrastructure with the hope that this gets approved. They know that they are doing it at their own risk, <laughs> but they're putting it in the Walnut Street project at their own risk currently until you all approve it, knowing that, that you could not. Uh, but they are going underground walnut um, before we got any paving down. They actually made a agreement with Summers and it's on the side and they started putting it in and we said, well, you can, but there's no guarantee that this will pass. Um, but um, they will be attached to poles and going underground. Uh, it's mostly going to service businesses is my understanding. And um, kind of think of the state of Franklin Loop, um, Roan Street. Uh, coming down South Road from Irwin, I believe, is, is kind of the route that they're taking with their fiber and then kind of looping uh, Walnut, uh, ETSU, uh, State of Franklin. Uh, that's kind of the loop that they presented to us. So there's no physical cabinets that will be above ground, sitting on the ground? or uh, Not that they've shared with us at this point in time, uh, but no, it's, it's all fiber and, and underground, at least on Walnut. Um, and they just showed the polls and that, that's all that they presented to us again until some sort of agreement. Uh, I think the agreement, and, and we can ask Ms. Sandos, uh, it, it says that they shall provide some plans in, in uh, more detail. Do you know what all services they provide? I, they I, um, I know it's fiber, high speed internet to businesses is what they had mentioned to me in, back in December that they were wanting to provide to okay. uh, the citizens. We do three readings on this yes. as well. Yes. Maybe that I would just ask that question: Do they plan any other kind of hardware that would be um, on the surface? Because we're getting a lot of clutter out there. And I will tell you, there will be a separate franchise agreement that goes specifically with them as okay. well. Okay. So in we'll have more details about it. That's required. Okay. Yeah. How, it, how is a right of way access different than like a utility easement? Is the, is there a difference to be understood in those? terms I, to be honest I would have to look at them both to really tell you okay. accurately what the difference is yeah I would be interested mm -hmm. between now and subsequent readings yeah, about like reading. what latitude do they have beyond laying fiber I mean are there things they could start to do or do they have to kind of at least come back and get some input and and I'll I'll take that under advisement and provide you with more details regarding that question appreciate thank it you. thank you do I have a motion Move approval on first reading. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, Ms. Laps. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Hunter? Yes. Commissioner Wise? Yes. Vice Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mayor Fowler? Yes. Commission, your next order of business is consideration of ordinance of item number 6.3, which is ordinance 4843 23. This is the first reading. It's an ordinance to amend Title VIII, Chapter One of the Code of the City of City, the City of Johnson City, Tennessee. And we have Miss Sandoz here. Commissioners, you'll recall this came before you on the last reading. At that time, the item was uh, deferred to this meeting um, in anticipation of some additional input from the police department as well as from the schools. Uh, with your agenda item as a backup document, you will see a memorandum from the police department. Uh, talk to Chief Church about any concerns that would be existing with regard to. Bless, bless you, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Um, with regard to allowing this outdoor um, area for beer consumption. Uh, noted in the memorandum, uh, there were not any areas of concern from the police department. Uh, the second request was made to uh, Dr. Barnett with the school system. Um, I think very reasonably, and I concur legally, I'd advise against having um, alcohol consumption while students are present, <laughs> anyhow. Uh, but that was his major concern and request is that uh, not to have any events that included that outdoor consumption area when there were school activities or students present, which that does include the summer activities because there are planned events and programming that goes on nearly year round, um, specifically for the 4th of July event that's a dead week for the schools and, and for that property, for the, the outside area of the property as well. Um, but the executive director for Freedom Hall would be in charge of the scheduling of those events. And again, legal would also advise not to have any events that have outside consumption when there's gonna be students present. 
is that going to be in the ordinance itself that says that? So we don't we don't get it every time to come back and <laughs> approve it or not approve it. I, I don't know that that would be necessary to include. We can certainly include that if there is a, a preference for that specification. Um, think but it, it's, it sounds good saying it, but writing it down might be the the better way. So there'd be three levels to approve any of those events, okay. um, as well as the scheduling of them. Gotcha. I, theoretically, I don't know how they would overlap. Yeah. Um, right. well, perhaps just writing up a procedures on how, how it would be handled without my, it being embedded in the ordinance would So my recommendation suffice. on that would be to include that in the special events policy mm -hmm. or the Freedom Hall Freedom policy. Hall yeah. yeah. Okay. That'd be fine. And that's just something. I can certainly speak to that. I understand. Uh, yes, we would concur with uh, legal on all of that, and we, we can go through uh, special events if so, so desired. Okay. That's all not right. a problem. All right. Thanks. <coughs> Do I have a motion? Move approval. I have a motion? Second. And I have a second. Any further discussion? Ms. Laus. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Hunter? Yes. Commissioner Wise? Yes. Vice Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mayor Fowler? Yes. Thank you. Um, Commission, your next order of businesses under these items is items number seven, which is ordinances for second reading. Uh, item 7.1 is ordinance number 4837-23. This is the second reading. It's an ordinance to abandon an existing sanitary sewer easement located on property owned by the city of Johnson City at tax parcel 054A-B-012 and 054A-B-12.02 and Brummett Development LLC at parcel 054A-B-011.05. And I think we have someone from Water Sewer. I don't know if um, Tom. Mr. Witherspoon is here to discuss he this item. Coming around. He's coming around. Or <coughs> leaving. Or <laughs> leaving. Thank you, Mr. Witherspoon. Yes, sir. Not a lot to say on this one uh, with the public's development. They had to relocate the sewer line. They relocated it, gave us a new easement. They want, they would like this easement abandoned. Move approval. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All right, Ms. Laus? Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Hunter? Yes. Commissioner Wise? Yes. Vice Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mayor Fowler? Yes. Item number 7.2 is ordinance number 4839-23. This is the second reading in public hearing. This is an ordinance to establish article 14 for open space. Did I get that right, Peyton? Is it 14? Yes, ma'am. Uh, of open space in the city of Johnson City zoning code and to amend articles two and four definitions of <coughs> terms of use in the code and use requirements by district in order to establish open space requirements and standards. Thank, Thank you. you. And I had to Google um, Roman numerals too as I was um, writing sorry. this ordinance. Well, and I like triple checked well, myself and I still got it wrong. You said section 14, it's but it's 17. I, yeah, that, that's why I was like, I don't think it's 14, so it's 17. <laughs> okay. Thank you for right. saying that. Roman numeral mishaps. <laughs> yes. Um, so commission, I am on second reading for this item. Um, so I'm not going to give my, my full presentation, but I am kind of going to go back through it because it is public hearing tonight. Um, so just a reminder, the purpose and intent of the open space ordinance, we essentially wanted a means to be able to preserve land within our residential <coughs> developments, um, both for conservation purposes and also for recreational purposes, um, and making our open space more intentional um, where it is located in within the context of both the development and the city. So with that, um, as far as our timeline goes, as you can see, we are at our second reading and public hearing tonight for this item. 
Um, we have a planning commission workshop scheduled next week actually to talk about multifamily and potential commercial open space standards. So we haven't forgotten about that. Um, but as far as single family open space standards go, you have public hearing tonight and then it'll come before you all for third reading at your next meeting on May 4th. The applicability right now, as I said, is single family. Um, it, we're looking at anything greater than 25 dwelling units um, and anything greater than 10 acres where new roads are required. Um, so really the applicability here is meant for your larger subdivisions, um, bigger developments. And so we're trying to avoid applying these standards to you know, smaller infill developments. <coughs> We are looking at 15%. Um, we got to 15% because it's not only similar to what other jurisdictions require, um, but it was already in our RP districts. And even though it didn't have the same standards that we are now applying, um, it was a good jumping off space from something that we already have. Again, just to show you guys what a visualization of 15% looks like, um, this is a development pre-open space standards. You can see that it's got 36 single family lots. And then after you were to apply the open space ordinance to this development, you would get 31 single family lots. Um, so you do lose some lots as a developer when you apply open space standards. Um, it's sort of a, a trade off as you have community gathering areas and conservation, you're gonna lose lots. As far as our actual open space requirements go, um, we are suggesting that you have a passive open space and then an active open space. And so that active open space is gonna be at least seven and a half percent, so that's half of our 15%. Um, and you can have more if you'd like, but that's just to give the residents in the neighborhood a more activated space to be able to gather. So kind of going a little bit more in depth as passive versus active open space, um, residents can still use passive open space. Um, it just doesn't have to be a very structured, formal space. Um, so you can see up here with the beautiful dog on the screen. What's that your dog's <laughs> name? His name is Aikman. Okay. <laughs> and I've just been waiting since I started to be able to show him off here. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, but you can see that you can still utilize these spaces as a resident, um, but it also protects your ecologically sensitive areas. Um, so it kind of serves both of those purposes. Whereas on the flip side, your active spaces are, you know, your more built up, um, your activated areas where you have things like walking trails or maybe a dog park, um, a playground and picnic tables, really like your community gathering spaces. Um, for any walking trails, we did add walking trail standards because we didn't want to, you know, have walking trails that washed away after a year. Um, so for in order, in order for your um, walking trail to count, it will have to meet these standards. Um, we do have a clause in the ordinance that says that if any sort of greenway plan or any sort of parks and rec comes along, um, this document will have to work with that. So there's the potential in the future as you know, parks and rec develops their plans um, to tie into greenways and, and things of that nature. Peyton, could you go back to the trail real quickly? Yeah, absolutely. Um, can, the, can the surface, that looks like a concrete surface on that one, but it, and asphalt, can it be chat? It can be um, concrete, gravel, or asphalt okay. is what we have written in. Good. Um, as far as reductions and exceptions goes, um, if the city wants to construct a park, the city can initiate um, that sort of reduction. So say that there was going to be a park on a master plan um, and the city wanted to build it and utilize some of that area, the developer could potentially have their um, open space requirement lowered for working with the city to create that. Um, but again, that would be a city initiated process. Um, also, if you're within a quarter mile from an existing park, you get up to a 25% reduction in your standards. Um, the purpose of this is for residents to have that sort of walkability and access to those resources. So if they're already that close, um, that allows for a reduction in your requirement. Um, if you have 30,000 square foot lots or greater, so you've already got those massive estate lots, you don't really need you know, a, a more defined community area. Um, and then for agricultural uses. As far as access goes, you have to be able to access the open space, and so that can be 10 feet of access along a public street, or you can have 10 feet of access along a private street, but that must come with director approval to make sure that it's accessible for the residents. We also have a couple um, definition and code edits to go through with this one. Um, just some, some cleaning up and some changes, uh, making edits to the RP so that the RP open space standards will still apply for multifamily right now. Um, but if they came in with single family RP districts, they would still have to work with our new open space ordinance standards. 
Uh, staff and Planning Commission recommended approval, and there's a number of bridge plan policies that support this, and I can answer any questions that you all have. And again, this is public hearing. Any questions for Peyton? If not, I'm going to open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak? You can come forward and give us your name and your address, and we'll give you three minutes to talk. Uh, Danny Sells, I live on Delmer Salts Road in Gray. I would assume that about May 5th I will join city property. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I should have sent Peyton a, a, a picture of my cats. Uh, it, <laughs> we could have added. That herding cats probably would be active, I would assume, with your dog being rather calm looking, that that would probably be passive. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, uh, I, I support the open space initiative, but I still feel, as I've said several times before and at, at the Planning Commission meetings as well, it's uh, very unclear as to actually what the purpose, what goals you're trying to do, and I still want to encourage that uh, as you go through your uh, updating of your growth plan, that you utilize that opportunity to find out from your citizens what it is that they want. I think there's also a need to really figure out within the city itself on your current open space relative to parks and everything else what you have so you can sort of begin to think about what it is that you ought to be providing as things keep growing like they are in gray, uh, that, that this open space actually does serve a purpose that the people can understand, as well as the developers and the, uh, and, and the homeowners associations that are going to be keeping these spaces up. So I, I just think there's a quite a bit of work to be done yet as you go through the other parts of, uh, of this on the other uh, pieces that, that are not included in this one. Uh, in order to really better understand and support this and, and it actually to be able to accomplish what I think you all are wanting to accomplish with an open space. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I will close the public hearing and do I have a motion? I will move for approval. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, Ms. Laps. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Hunter? Yes. Commissioner Wise? Yes. Vice Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mayor Fowler? Yes. Next is uh, ordinance num or item number 7.3, which is ordinance number 4841-23. This is the second reading. It's an ordinance assigning the R2B zoning district to an approximately 115-acre territory located on north of Ford Creek and RP3 district to an approximately 20 acre territory south of Ford Creek associated with the voluntary Keebler annexation. Hello, good evening Welcome again, back. Commission. Um, <laughs> so in front of you guys, I have the uh, zoning assignment for the Keebler property annexation. Um, I gave a pretty in-depth presentation uh, last commission meeting, so I'm not gonna explain all of those bits and pieces, um, but I'll just kind of give you guys a refresher. Um, as a reminder, it is the second reading of this. However, because this is an annexation zoning assignment, it is not public hearing. That will be at the next meeting on May 4th, and that will also fall at the same time as the final resolution for the annexation itself. So their request is to do R2B um, on this much larger portion of the property um, to the left of Ford Creek. Um, and then to the right of Ford Creek, they plan to do RP3. Um, there is no binding concept plan with this initial zoning assignment. Um, however, land use does support the zoning assignment. You've got your more dense um, you know, ability to have multifamily kind of towards the edge, the roads, um, and then you have your single family tucked away in the back and R2B is a appropriate density for the area. The future land use map again supports that higher density towards your roads. And then again, in an effort to be transparent, the applicant plans to rezone once in the city. Um, they would have a binding concept plan. This is what they have provided thus far, um, but whenever they do submit that formal application, um, that will be a part of it. And so when they do request a rezoning for the RP district, they will be, like I said, bound to whatever submission they have at the time in that concept plan. If a rezoning were to occur subsequent of this, this would be the timeline that it would be looking at. And staff and planning commission both recommended approval of the zoning assignment of R2B and RP3. Thank you. Any discussion, motion? Just to clarify, on RP3, they would have to bring a plan before the planning commission 
isn't there still a site plan on our on the RP part of it? No, not for the here, and I'm going to go back so I can talk while using the map. Not for this section right here, because this is an annexation and an initial zoning assignment. They do not have to bring a plan um, before you guys. There is no binding plan. However, when the rezoning hits and they request this larger portion be rezoned to RP, that is when the requirement will kick in. I see. Okay. And so they will actually be able to essentially get started under the RP zoning because that is the requested zoning is what they you know want to do with that one. So they'll be able to get started on the development of the townhome portion immediately. Um, so the rezoning is really only going to concern this back R2B portion. And again, that's just they're not asking for the RP on that side of it right now because that would allow multifamily and a much higher density than staff is comfortable recommending without a concept plan. I'm going to make a motion for approval, but I, I want to take just a minute first of all and thank our developer, Mr. Ms. Kars et al., the, the group sitting up here. I know you all have worked very hard with our planning department, with the planning commission. This has been a long-term effort, and I know you will be glad to Not see light people. at the end of the tunnel here. It looks like we're going to see them all summer. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe not go quickly. <laughs> but, but I think what we have here is going to be a, a development that everybody can be very proud of, and we appreciate all the work that you've done on this and, and uh, helping us get to this point. So thank you, and with that, I will move for approval. I have a motion. Do I have a second? So moved. I have a second. Any further discussion? All right, Ms. Louse. Commissioner Brock. Yes. Commissioner Hunter. Yes. Commissioner Wise. Yes. Vice Mayor Murphy. Yes. Mayor Fowler. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner. Your next order of business uh, or uh, under third the third ordinances with the third reading, item number eight point one, which is ordinance number. 4838-23 is an ordinance to amend the fiscal year, fiscal year 2023 budget passed by ordinance 4812-22. Uh, we would like to make a recommendation or consideration at this point for the commission to amend this budget ordinance to add an additional $80,000 for soundproofing and or sound enhancing uh, measures for the Langston Center. Uh, this money would come from fund balance. Move approval as modified. I have second. a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, Ms. Louse. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Hunter? Yes. Commissioner Wise? Yes. Vice Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mayor Fowler? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dustin. Commission item 8.2 is ordinance number 4840-23. Uh, again, this is the third reading. It's an ordinance to make text changes to Article 2, definition of terms used in the code and article four yes. application of regulations of the zoning code of the city of johnson city and to and a provision for lot area averaging we have um, mr will Ryder here for this item good evening mayor fowler and vice mayor Murphy, commissioners mr ball uh this is uh this would allow lot area averaging the traditional single family zoning districts um, R1, 2, R2, A, B, and C, and there are no changes from the previous two readings. Move approval. I second. have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Ms. Louse. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Hunter? Yes. Commissioner Wise? Yes. Vice Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mayor Fowler? Yes. Good job, Mr. Ryder. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Commission, next order of business includes um, other items. Items 9 point, item 9.1 is consideration of a management agreement for economic development services between Washington County Econo Economic Development Council and the City of Johnson City. We have Ms. Alicia Summers, our Economic Development Director, here to talk about this item. Good evening, Commissioners. So again, for your consideration is the management agreement between the Washington County Economic Development Council and the city of Johnson City for economic development services. Those services will include um, business recruitment, uh, business retention and expansion, and site development. And staff uh, recommends approval. Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. And John Hunter, what is this about? Re recruitment and, and retention. retention. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Anything else? Ms. Laps. 
Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Hunter? Yes. Commissioner Wise? Yes. Vice Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mayor Fowler? Yes. And and be before we move on to the next one, because they're really related, I think it's worth acknowledging the collaborative nature of both of these between the city of Johnson City and Washington County. And I think a lot of times when there's a point of friction, we pay a lot of attention to that point of friction. This is an example where there's a point of collaboration and partnership, and let's just make sure we don't let that get past us without acknowledging it. So I just want to acknowledge that. And if I could add one thing to that too, is that that partnership uh, with the Washington County Economic Development Council has been in place since 2011. So it's a long-term um, partnership. This also includes the town of Jonesboro. It correct? certainly yeah. does. Yeah. yeah, and them too. We like them and we work <laughs> with them too. But we tend to <laughs> always get along nicely with the town of Jonesboro. <laughs> um, thank you, Ms. Summers, for staying up here for the next item, <laughs> uh, which, which again also is is uh, indication of, of interlocal agreement together. Item 9.2, which is consideration. Did we have a vote on that one? We Not did. the second one, the we first one we did. On Thank you. And um, this is item 9.2, which is consideration of the Washington County Economic Development Council revised interlocal agreement concerning economic development. Thank you. And once again, good evening. Uh, and this is the revised intergovernmental agreement. So the last revision to that agreement between Washington County, Johnson City, and the town of Jonesboro took place in 2014. So this revises that. At that time, uh, the agreement also encompassed management of the Public Building Authority, the Johnson City Industrial Development Board, and the Johnson City Development Authority. This revision takes those out and replaces that with what we just discussed in the management agreement, which is site development, business recruitment, and business retention and expansion, and staff recommends approval. Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, discussion, not that there's anything wrong with the Honorable Joe Wise Mayor being on there, but we can probably change that to me on the we've got a second signature that. page <laughs> yeah. we've got a second signature okay. page right. for you on that that yeah. has your name you actually the, the reason yeah. behind that yeah. um, is because when it was approved by the county which authorized and e executed the document in december the mayor was still mayor -wise. i understand i'm just greatest okay. honor bestowed on me as former <laughs> <mayor>. <laughs> any further discussion uh, ms laughs commissioner brock <laughs> yes commissioner hunter yes commissioner wise Yes. Vice Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mayor Fowler? Yes. Thank, Thank you, you. Ms. Summers. Uh, next item is item 9.3. This is an annexation request to proceed with an owner consent annexation for Glaze Farm. This is considered uh, to consider a request to proceed with the annexation of approximately 40 acres located at 997. Carroll Creek Road. And we have Mr. Will Ryder here. Good evening again. I, I apologize. We apparently had a technical difficulty with the slides on having this on the uh, uh, PowerPoint for you. This property is located, Joe Wilson is the owner of this property. It's approximately 40 acres. It's located behind the Ingalls on North Roan Street, fronts on Carroll Creek Road. Um, it's completely surrounded by the city limits. This is an excellent example of an infill annexation that should be fairly easy to serve that's within our existing city limits. This is the request to proceed to send this to the Planning Commission for consideration of the plan of services and for um, zoning assignment. Uh, we recommend uh, that, that you would uh, agree to the request to proceed and send this to the Planning Commission. I think this would be a great infill development for the city. Move, Move approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. We do have really good pictures in our handout here, so that's good. Thank we you. don't have the slide with the star. <laughs> no, no <laughs> star. Not yet, but we'll get that. Okay. Any discussion? Um, Slaps. Commissioner Brock? Yes. Commissioner Hunter? Yes. Commissioner Wise? Yes. Vice Mayor Murphy? Yes. Mayor Fowler? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, this concludes our formal order of business. I will start since I started over here earlier. Commissioner Hunter, anything else? I uh, just remind the public that application is open to serve on boards and committees, uh, various boards and committees with the city, um, and encourage people to that live within the city limits to <laughs> to apply. All right. If you don't have your taxes in, you're late. Yeah. <laughs> True, but late's better than never. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Wise. 
You got nothing. I think I had. Wow. Yeah. All right, Vice Mayor. Uh, the highlight of the day is in having the students from Science Hill High School. Yeah. Um, they were able to spend some really good time with us and to attest what. I don't know that they got much from us. Well, I think we got a fair bit yeah, from them. Yeah, I think we, we got our phone we got numbers. A, yeah, we got a whole lot from them, and yeah. I believe that our future is in good hands. Yeah. I agree with that. And thank you all for sticking it out for the whole meeting tonight, too, the ones yeah. who are left there. So thank you very much. If there's nothing else, I will close the meeting.